This is Oscar Carmona from Healing Grounds Nursery located in Santa Barbara, California, here today to talk to you about container gardening, um, whether that be inside or outside. An important component of the work that I do because I strive to have healthy, vibrant plants is to include a lot of compost, good compost material in your soil medium. And that can, that's true whether you're talking about an outside garden soil or your container garden. Here we have a woolly pocket container and this is a handsome square uh, container that I will be, will be demonstrating uh, herb transplanting into. Um, this can be uh, maintained inside if you have sufficient light and we're talking about five or six hours. And around me are other examples that you could select for your uh, inside or outside environment depending on your taste and let your creativity and your aesthetic sense be your guide when you're choosing a potting um, container for your garden. The larger, of course, uh, the more uh, readily um, accessible it is to a larger uh, quantity of plants and, and perhaps variety as well. Um, Smaller is not necessarily li limiting you in this way, but if you go towards uh, the leafy varieties such as lettuces, you can obviously fit more uh, quantity into a, into a container such as that. Uh, edible flowers are also a nice addition to your uh, potting uh, selection. And uh, of course, it's not just for eating, but also for the visuals, which are just as important. Um, I'd like to demonstrate now uh, transplanting into a, into a garden uh, pot and I've already started this one here with uh, some assortment of herbs and I'm going to continue with the herb assortment. Herbs are fairly hardy and they lend themselves readily to potted containers and some uh, plants like this mint can be a bit invasive if you put them in, into a regular garden setting but in a pot like this they're, they're limited and so uh, they lend themselves nicely. Uh, one thing to remember is that you want to make sure that you, s that you plant your plants to the level that they come into the container. So in this case, I'm going to plant this as deep as the level of the soil that it comes in. And I'm going to nestle the soil around nicely here, just like this, to make that interface between the potting mix that I have in the container and the soil that um, is um, surrounding the root will mesh nicely. I've already got these other uh, plants invested into the soil and I'm going to add um, some other herbs. Here's some uh, uh, Italian basil and I can put that right in like that. Um, because I'm adding uh, nutrients and I'll be feeding with nutrients, I can um, um, plant these in close proximity, maybe closer than you might if you were in a regular garden setting. But uh, one of the advantages of having a small container is you can give the plants a lot of love and attention and, it, and it's, a, it's a bit more practical to do so. And as a reward, you can get more plants in a smaller space. So I'm going to keep planting these and you can see that it's not a complicated process and it actually goes quite quickly. And I've got another basil plant and I've got, and I just planted over here, a lovage. It's a, it's a European herb used in flavoring soups. In the back here, I've got Burgarten sage and some German thyme and some opal basil. And so I've got a nice assortment there. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some mulch around and that helps keep your soil from splashing out and keeps things clean. This happens to be uh, a, uh, the husks from the cocoa nut for the chocolate factory. If you have dogs, you may not want to use this option as it can be toxic to your pets, your dogs in particular. But it is a very nice, attractive form of mulch and it has a pleasant smell. So it's, it, it can be a good option for you. Um, but at any rate, it mediates uh, moisture and helps keep your moisture levels constant and not uh, drying out so much. And uh, it's an attractive um, protectant for your soil medium. And then the last thing I'm going to do is to water my plants in nicely and to make sure that we have a good uh, moist environment for these plants to start to grow into. And in this water, I've, I have some compost tea, which is uh, um, like, the bio, like the compost is teeming with microbial activity and in conjunction with fish and kelp, which is a combination, uh, all-purpose organic fertilizing combination that I highly recommend. 
uh, a watering can like this allows you to water gently, get your water in, and you can see that I'm not inundating my plants. They're very gently being watered, and, and they will take nicely to this environment. Uh, if you are choosing to, to plant indoors, remember again, you need to have a good indirect light or direct light at about five or six hours a day for these plants to thrive in this environment. But the, this handsome container, as I said, lends itself nicely to being indoors as well as to being outdoors. This is Oscar Carmona from Healing Grounds Nursery. I wish you happy and healthy gardening. Uh, have a good day.